All right, Hugh McCutcheon, welcome to the show. It's awesome to see you, my man. You know, I tell people yeah, all the time. What, what was your What was your first year at BYU coaching? Was it in '96 or was it in '97? Do you remember? No, '96. Yeah, '96. Yeah, so it was my freshman year. Yeah, mm-hmm. you had all the the young guys coming in because we had it was it was me as a freshman, Aussie as a freshman, Ingo as a freshman. Oh yeah, a lot of puppy dogs. Yeah, <laughs> and we and we weren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, we're hard because we're all freshmen. You know? We're not supposed yeah. to be all good, you know. Yeah, at that that's point. right. I, but I tell early. people, I thought that was the case. I tell people all the time that, I mean, you. So I don't know if you knew this, but um, so I skipped a grade. So I was all always right. a year behind everyone from an age standpoint. So my freshman year at BYU, I was only seventeen. Yeah, I remember that you so, were you were the youngest of the young. I, I didn't that's know right. that you'd uh, you were so mentally advanced that you'd skip a year. I didn't know that you were. <laughs> I was dealing with a prodigy. I had no idea. <laughs> you know, what's even funnier is the grade that I skipped was kindergarten, which is like, <laughs> if you're going to, if you're going to skip a grade, why are you going to pick kindergarten? So I tell yeah. people all the time, I'm like, yeah, I could do, I could do, um, what was it? I could do some things really well. I could stack right. my blocks like, like super high. And then I could yeah. like tie my shoes really fast. And then they're like, oh, so you're for sure yeah. need to go to first grade. You know, Goodness, it's, he's a savant. Let's get him out of here. <laughs> Look at that finger painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But, but what I, I tell people that, you know, you, I, I, you were my coach and I, since I'd been 17. It, we, we'd go that far yeah. back and. Look, I mean, even back then, I remember you as kind of still a young guy, like trying to figure it out and, you know, get sure. your feet wet and what you were trying to do. So anyways, it's just. Yeah, we were back. all, we were all in it together, man. But it's been, a, it was a long time, you know, we got yeah. to work together for, geez, what would it be like 12, 13 years, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Well, we appreciate you taking some time. It's awesome to have you on the show. It's good to just connect with you. And, um, yeah, likewise. you know, you bring up a good idea because we're this, this is going to be a little bit of a different interview because we're kind of going to interview each other and kind of bounce some questions back and forth, which will, which will be fun. I've got a number of questions I want to dig in with you. And then you've got a few questions that you, that you want to talk about uh, with me. But um, yeah, give, I, I give just this, thought, go ahead. No, go ahead. Just started, right, I was just going to say, I think, it's probably pretty rare that, that uh, you get two people on a, on a thing like this where they have so many shared experiences. And I think you get some value out of the different perspectives, especially, you know, when you're talking about athlete coach, the, the two different sides of the coin, you know, maybe here was the intention. What, what was it being received like, you know, that kind of right. stuff. I think that, that there's probably some stuff that worth a look at. Yeah. And I, I think that conversation I don't remember ever having with you. So I think it'll be interesting from both of our standpoints. So um, give, give everybody a little bit of your backdrop. So when did you start getting into volleyball, even at an early age, you know, growing up in New Zealand? And so how did that, how did that come about? (laughs) Well, as you know, New Zealand's not really a a volleyball powerhouse. Um, (laughs) You know, we we produce some good beach teams from time to time, but, but we are hard to find six people who can play, let alone two. And uh, I just happened to be uh, at a high school where the sport was good. And and actually, high school volleyball has really high participation for for boys and girls in uh, in New Zealand. Um, there just isn't much infrastructure for stuff beyond that. But anyway, I was playing a bunch of different sports, and uh, you know, I just through a variety of circumstances that we don't need to get into, but I ended up wanting to leave basketball and uh, thought I'd try volleyball. I, you know, the guy that was teaching, it was my phys- uh, coaching. It was my physics teacher seemed like a decent enough human being. And uh, the guy seemed cool. So I was like, yeah, I'll go give it a try. And it was pr- pretty immediate. My response to it. I, I really enjoyed the, the team nature of it, you know, cause yeah. it's, a, it's a really unique connecting piece in volleyball. And then the, uh, intellectual side of it like because tactically i think it's really cool volleyball yeah. and then just it's a fun sport jump high hit hard and it's, it's a blast that's how you did things back in the day what other sports were you into so you said basketball did, didn't i remember yeah. that you were into like cricket too kind of I, I don't know i'm just i'm remembering that yeah i mean everyone grows up playing yeah everyone grows up playing those goofy commonwealth sports like cricket and rugby and all that stuff yeah. and uh i played field hockey for a while and uh i don't know soccer 
I don't know, just a bit of everything. But I wasn't really super sporty. I wasn't really super anything. I was incredibly average at most things and um, I don't know, just kind of cruising along, you know, and then yeah. my head and my heart. I'm just like, I'm and uh, when did you first realize that going and playing in the U S was an option? Uh, you know, maybe 1988 or 89, maybe, maybe 89. I, in 88, I got to play in a, um, a tournament with the Asian junior championships. I think it was in Indonesia. So I started playing in 85, right? So that's when I decided I was in the, the fifth form. They, what they, whatever they call it in New Zealand. And, uh, and, uh, I got to go to this international tournament and I could see like, man, I could, there were other good players, but I could, I maybe I could be a good player. <laughs> you know, I'd started late, but, but, um, I had, like I said, I had some physical talents that lent themselves to maybe being able to be good. And, um, uh, there really wasn't, uh, any mechanism in New Zealand to, to see how good you could get. You know, by the time I was in, in 1989, I was, playing on the national team, even though I get it, it's New Zealand, but you know, for, for that country, you're still at the close to the pinnacle and starting as a blocker and doing all that stuff. And so it was kind of like, you know, I got to go somewhere else, I think, to try to have a chance to see how good I could be. And, and um, the idea of going to the U S and getting an education and playing seemed like the, the, it made the most sense, but really, really challenging. Cause as you know, right, there's not that many programs in the U S and certainly uh, there aren't very many people recruiting the New Zealand volleyball landscape. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, know, a lot of, a lot of randomness for me to get there. Yeah. So how does, how does Carl and other people, how do they reach out to you? How did they find you? Did, was it through some. You there, am I? Oh, that was weird. We got, I got yeah, booted I off. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Here, how about I'll try and go downstairs and see if I can get more bandwidth. Maybe that helps us. Okay. Just give me a sec. We'll, we'll pick yeah, this no up worries. or we can start over. Doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. it's, we, we can keep going John because Kissel it's, is the it's no big deal. Okay. So, yeah, uh, John Kessel came to New Zealand to do a clinic of volleyball. Oh, coaching. interesting. I never yeah, knew that. And, yeah. And so, and he also uh, was in Australia so that's, and he picked up. Uh, J Dub, Jason yeah. Watson on the way as well. And so it's a nice, uh, nice pickup, nice couple there. pickups for him. <laughs> Worked out. All right. So he came and he was like, uh, and I went and just introduced myself and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm interested in trying to get to the U S and, uh, as you know, uh, you know, it was tough, tough to recruit to Provo back in the day. Uh, <laughs> McGowan, they just got the program going and I, I didn't know anything about Utah or, BYU or any of it, you know, I mean, they could have been selling me beachfront property and I would have been sure, you know, I, I had no idea what was going on. So uh, knowing Carl, he probably did. I, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted a, the chance, you know, and it, so uh, Kiss, Kiss called Magoo and then Magoo called me and, uh, you know, we, we tried to put it together. Huh. That's cool. So you get to BYU and, and, you know, you're, you're, you find out quickly what Provo is all about and, and uh, you know, but the volleyball is good and you're probably, you know, school is good and, and you're, you're yeah. probably learning a lot. And... Well, the volleyball sucked. We were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking about the rest of the league was pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I got to watch some good volleyball on the other side of the net. Uh, but, yeah, no, I remember like I landed in Provo and uh, Carl picked me up at the airport and Jason, he had Jason with him, maybe as just to translate, you know, <laughs> and uh, and Jay, uh, they dropped me off at this house and, you know, there was a bunch of volleyball guys there and we, we were crashing for a few days until we could figure out where we were going to stay. And um, Jay took me to a 7-Eleven and we drank Mountain Dew or something and he thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I, I just remember like, what am I, what are we doing here? This is so bizarre. <laughs> like, super strange. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it got better, you know, that the first year we were as, as uh, you know, 
as legend has it, right? Two and 27. And it, it was really, really challenging, but it got yeah. better. And by the time I finished, we, we were respectable kids. But yeah. 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 So, so after, after you're done at BYU, what's, what goes on next for you? Did you played a couple of years overseas? If I remember, is that right? He kept playing. Yeah. And- yeah, I went to I went over to Finland for a year. Yeah. Just again, right? I'm just this random guy from New Zealand. So and I'm not playing for the USA team. I don't have an Olympic medal or anything, so it's hard to get right. a decent job. And um so I picked up a gig in Finland, which ended up being great. I still have friends there today, uh, which is cool. And then um and then had a chance to go to Japan the next year, which was also a really good opportunity, but uh, super old school Japanese training, you know, like mm. eight hours a day, six days oh. a week, just oh. the most mind numbingly boring stuff you could have ever imagined. So, um, yeah, they, they were interested in, in, you know, maybe having me back for the next year. And I was like, yeah, no, it's cool. Um, that's how, so that, that, that reminds me of my one and only year in Russia. So oh, yeah. <laughs> the same yeah. thing. They're like, Hey, we'd like you to come back for another two years. And I'm like, honestly there's not the i don't care how much money you throw at me there's no way i'm coming back you've literally broke me mentally and physically i'm broken yeah that's exactly how i felt same you know because you're like man i want to be able to walk when i'm 40 you know like i mean just some of the drills like ryan we have a drill where you know it was a spiking drill right so we're in the middle of industrial osaka there's this gym in the middle of nowhere right and there's it, it's freezing. We're in like full sweats with jackets and Mizuno fingerless gloves. And and stuff, they, had, right? they had they like the gloves too. Yeah. 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 We had all that stuff. There's a, there's a, uh, this like a heater in the corner that puts out about 10,000 BTUs. If you're like three feet next to it, you're probably <laughs> going to get a third degree burn. If you're 10 feet away from it, you can't feel a thing. So it's freezing. <laughs> so here it is. 14 guys, one net, one setter everybody has to get a hundred good spikes, right? A good spike is you bounce it or you crush it, but everyone has to get a hundred. So there you go. Hit your ball. Yeah. yeah, Whatever. Right. You got to make some little noise in Japan. You know how that goes. And, uh, and then you go get your ball, wait in the back of the line. And if it was good one, all right, no, here's my turn again. Right. Two, everyone has to get a hundred. There you go. Oh my God. And it's three hours of spiking. Good time. Three hours of shag- hitting a ball, shagging it, going to the back of the line, and then hitting a ball again. Yeah. And you got to hit it. Like, you got to hit it, it as hard as you right, can. Right. And right, it's right, right. Freezing. But at no point did the coaching staff think to themselves, this might not be the best use of our time right now. Is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't care. They, they, I think, really, because, because the tradition of it was about company teams. You know, I really think it was like, hey, we've just got to, if, if the workers are doing eight hours, we've got to do eight hours because we're workers too. So got it. there you go. Wow. Yeah. So then anyway. keep going then. So you, you, you finish playing and do you get to a point where you're kind of like, okay, what, what's next? I mean, you're, you're kind of, you're finishing school, right? Your school's kind of finished. Yeah. Um, so and- I graduated in 93, played in 94 in Finland, 95 in, in Japan. And then I was like, yeah, you know what? This is it. I, I got to get out of here. So yeah. uh, I, I left a graduate school application on file at BYU. And I called Carl and I was like, hey, look, I don't know if you need a coach or whatever, but I just figured that way they could pay for my graduate school. You know? Right. So I, right. that's how I did it. I came back and started coaching. And initially it was just a means to an academic end. But that's, yeah. that's how, how it kicked off. And then there we go, 96, here we are. Yeah. Wow. Did you, did you immediately gravitate, gravitate towards um, you liking coaching or was it just kind of like, I'm getting school paid for. I kind of like being in the gym with the guys. It's good to be around volleyball. Or were you like, man, this is something that I really want to look at even as I go along. Well, initially I just thought that Carl had a lot of strengths. um, But, but I thought I could, he and I would actually work well together because you know, his, his approach is so pragmatic and so, uh, you know, the- I don't know, theoretical, whatever right. you want to call it. Yeah. And I just thought there was maybe some, uh, some of the communication connection piece that I could add. And I thought, you know, it'd be good to try that. And, uh, 
and get some schooling and, you know, it'd be cool. I, I still love volleyball. You know, I still was into it. It just, you know, the playing of it was just getting to be a drag. And as yeah. you know, right, it's a whole lot different when you play in college than when you go off and play professionally. It's a whole different oh, yeah. motivation. Yeah. yeah. So going to grad school and then after a couple of years, uh, the coaching thing became way more compelling than the academic stuff. And that's why, uh, you know, initially I, I, I was planning on doing a PhD and trying to yeah. be an academic, but yeah, so I, I did, that. I did that first couple of years, did my science master's degree and then enrolled in business school and then did an MBA. And that was just because as coaches, you know, we're all an ankle sprain away from unemployment. So right. you got to have a, a real qualification just in case. So that's why I went to business school and um, did that. And yeah. which worked out to be great. I mean, for what I do now, having uh, the science stuff and the management stuff has been really good. Yeah. So 96 happens. We're very average, maybe even below average. I tell people all the time, Carl would come to the gym almost every day and say, yeah, guys, it looks like we're not going to have a program anymore. I mean, they're going to, I'm just waiting for the call when they're going to cut us. So he would just constantly be telling us that. Like, we're yeah. just, we're not going to be, you know, enjoy this while you can, because we're probably not going to have a program next year. <laughs> we're we're yeah. all just sitting there going like, wait, what? And then... Pretty uplifting, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got his interesting ways to motivate players, right? Yeah. So then in 97, we actually ended up being kind of a surprising team. Like, we, yeah. we were still yeah. fairly we young, times. but we had, we had a good team. Um, what, what year was, uh, was Steve a freshman in 96, or was he there earlier? Did he get there in like 95 or... No, Herbie, Steve was Hines. in one year. Yeah, Hines was yeah. one year before. So he was he was kind of like the elder statesman as a sophomore in 96. So. Yeah, right, right, right. And yeah. uh, But I, the, the thing I remember about 97 was that um, – was the Stanford match that we played at the Fieldhouse. Yeah. We Tell were we were, th we were three. They were one. Um, oh, they, had, yeah. they had Lambert, who had already been to the Olympics – and had yeah, already sure, played sure. at the yes. highest and then now he's coming back right and so everyone's yeah. like geez like this guy how'd they let him back into school you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah 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 so yeah. they're just like the overwhelming favorites and we're kind of this young scrappy team and we we go to the field house it's just packed six thousand people jam-packed and we ended up winning in five yeah and remember the all the fans storm the court and they're lifting aussie I and do. i up yeah, in the yeah, air yeah. or whatever and yep. I remember it was either the next day or the next day we come back into practice. I don't know if you remember this, but I'll never forget it. Carl, Carl says, hey, before we start practice, I want to show you guys something. And he, and he kind of wheels out the, the, um, like a, a, a TV with the, with the VCR, you know. He's like, I right. want to show you guys something from the match. And we're like, this is really strange, but it must be pretty important. So – he, he shows us, so we win the last point, the, the crowd rushes the court, and he goes, I want you to look at, watch Lambert. And we're like, okay. So he's kind of doing it in slow motion, and Lambert, the last ball drops, they lose, and Lambert's just kind of like deflated, and he's kind of walking out towards the, the visitor tunnel. And this, this, this little scrawny BYU fan goes right up into his face and starts screaming at him, like, yeah, like we won. And Lambert grabs him by the shoulders and throws him across the court. And the guy slides into, you know how like in the field house there was the court and then there was that little step? Sure. And so he slides and crashes into the step and he's like all mangled. And then he like, he kind of, <laughs> Carl's showing us this in slow motion. And he kind of like gets up and he like looks around to see if, if any of his friends saw it or something. And then when he realizes that right. nobody saw it, he starts celebrating again, like in the masses. <laughs> <laughs> Carl kept rewinding it because we were like, no way that just happened. That's, so that's what I remember about 97. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, wow. it was pretty funny. Yeah, no, I, I don't remember that. But, yeah, I'm sure Carl would have watched the video and he would have seen all of <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, he did. It's awesome. <laughs> That's classic. But tell then, me, you know, on your side, like, yeah. you know, BYU for you, uh, I don't know if it was an easy decision or not. My guess is you could have gone lots of places. But, uh, yeah. you know, how was it for you? Yeah, you know, I I went on all my trips when I was in high school. Obviously, I was one of the biggest recruits that year. Me and George um, remain yeah, coming sure. out of high school together. I, I actually just me and Reed disconnected yesterday. We I we interviewed Reed yesterday, and we were telling George stories. And I and I said, um, 
I'll never forget the first time I ever laid my eyes on George. So I think I was either a sophomore or a junior. It was my, my first year playing club. My club was in Huntington Beach. We were, we were pretty good. And we're playing in this club tournament down in one of the Cal State schools down in Southern Cal. And, you know, I, I, I get there, I'm, you know, I'm walking into the gym. I'm all pumped up. I'm all excited to play. <laughs> I walk into the gym and George's team is, is warming up on the court that is right next to the front door. And they're setting George two balls. And he's like, he's like this 15 year old kid, but he's getting like his chest over the net. And he's just bouncing these balls. And, and I literally, I'm not joking. I walked in the gym and I saw him do this. And I, and I literally turned around and left because I thought it was like an adult tournament. I'm like, there's no way this is a youth club volleyball tournament. This guy can't right, right, be right. my age. Right. And so then I see people kind of going in and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, who is that guy? He had just come from like Florida. Nobody really knew who he was, but he was just this huge, yeah. no one had ever seen anything like him. That was the first time I ever saw George. Yeah. And, I don't yeah. think anyone's seen anything like him since. I, mean, I don't think so was, either. You know, I have one memory of George and it's uh, a little bit different. It was um, when we were playing him, you know, when, when, uh, and I, I don't know if it was 99 or, or 98, I don't know, one of those years. Um, but I just remember we're playing him at, at home and it's, it's, he just crushes a ball on the right, you know, and he's, uh, Richie's blocking him. Right. So, uh, you know, <laughs> not, not known sin, for his blocking. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, and, uh, so he bounces this ball and I don't know if it went up into the, into the, uh, balcony or whatever, but yeah. it was pretty close, really impressive. And then they serve to us and Rich just, does the slimiest, cheesiest chisel off the guy's outside hand. You know, like it's just the worst shot. And it goes down for a kill. And it was just like this great moment. Like, hey, look, they're all the same on the, on the yeah. score sheet. You know what I mean? You got like, one and George I got is, one. Was, I got one. That's all yeah. we need to know. Yeah. <laughs> but George's would have been like the uh, old world highlight. And oh uh, Rich's, yeah, you, you'd guy. hope you'd never see a kill like that again. But yeah. Yeah, there you go. But listen, you, you, we went through some stuff, you know, I mean, you had to, you had to change, you had to get better, right? Yeah, no, it's, you know, going through that. So it was kind of George and I in high school and you probably don't know this, but I was actually like, I was like that close to going to Pepperdine to play with him. Yeah. Oh, wow. and you know, Marv kind of had this grand master plan of what our team was going to look like. And, and I was literally on the phone with Marv and Carl the night before this, the signing day. Mm -hmm. And um, just talking logistics and going back and forth. And, um, and it just so happened to work out that uh, Carl put together a, a little bit of a better package and, and just kind of went over the edge a little bit. And I called up Marv and I said, I'm, I'm going to BYU. And he was, he was obviously pretty disappointed. But then I called Carl and he was obviously really happy. But in Carl's way, like, you know, he would never show it. He's like, that's yeah. great news. I'm, I'm like, yeah. and, then, and then like, right, a, and then like thank a long pause that. on the phone, like that's great news. And then nobody said anything for like four or five seconds. And I was like, Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> but, but then later on, th this was more Carl. I think he kind of, you know, as he's getting older and wiser, he actually wrote me a really, really nice letter. And um, oh, he's, he just oh, said, good. you know, one of the best times of when I was at BYU was was winning the two national championships in the in the day you you called me and told me that you were going to come, and um, yeah. and it was just it was cool you know to kind of finally get a better understanding of how he truly felt about you know what he was trying to build at that time and how big of a piece he felt I was in getting the program to where it could eventually be. So, sure. Well, I think probably from his perspective, uh, you know, he was so committed or, or whatever entrenched in trying to get the right outcomes um, that, that so much of the other stuff was just, you know, in the moment, it didn't seem relevant or important. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, I think as he got older, no doubt he got a little more perspective and, yeah. and, you know, we had a, a pretty good team and not, you know, good run in 97 and a pretty good team in 98 yeah. and uh, that team ended up coming up short and that was a bummer, you know, the beast was there and a few others yeah. with kind of a uh, good, good little crew. But um, I would, do you think that 98 helped us be better than 99? I think so because, you know, it'd be interesting to get Aussie's thoughts on this as well. And, and Steve's too. Um, 
I don't know. It's just 98. We, we had some type of, it was just kind of a weird vibe on that team for some reason. Cause you're right. We mm-hmm. had really good talent and then you add Van Beast and he brought what he brings. And um, you know, there was the weird dynamic with, with Hector and, and, mm-hmm. and Pitsack at that time, which kind of, you know, and, and the setter is such a huge deal on a team. Yeah, sure. You know, Hector just had a fantastic year the year before and kind of surprised everybody. And, um, I don't know. It was just kind of a weird, a, a weird um, year. But I think for guys like like Aussie and Steve and, and maybe Mac and I and Rich too, it, it kind of mm-hmm. was like, hey, <laughs> you know, we're running out of chances here, so right. we got to come into the next year. I mean, totally focused on what the what we want to get out of this, and we knew we were going to be good, of course. Right. Right. But you know, we didn't. Maybe we didn't know that we would be arguably one of the better teams in the history of college volleyball. I mean, we were so yeah. dominant that year um, because everything yeah. just kind of fit together. Yeah. It was a pretty remarkable run. I mean, even though, you know, we lost that match in the marriage center right. and all that, but even then that was really good for us. Uh, you know, I, losing sucks. We know, yeah. right. But it's, it's an occupational hazard and, uh, yeah. and there's some really good opportunities for learning. And I think if any of us have learned, um, uh, the lessons about the winning side of it is that it can mask a lot of problems and not that that team had a lot of problems, but there were certainly some, some real great opportunities for improvement that came from that. So yeah. yeah. One yeah, loss. Totally okay. Agree. We'll take it. If that meant getting the national championship. Yeah. 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 And it almost made it a little sweeter just that we, you know, we end up playing Long Beach in the finals and just, you know, and just beating them down, which is what we were capable of, but maybe we needed to, that loss yeah. to kind of refocus us because I think we'd won like, I don't even know. We won like 18 or 19 games in a row up to that point. And who knows? We throw it into cruise control and we don't lose that game. What could potentially yeah. even happen in the end? But Yeah, especially when you get into the one and done phase. Right? Right. You have to understand that the margins are thin. And if you take it for granted, it can always come back and get you. No yeah. doubt there. No doubt there. I don't know if you remember this in 99, but um, so we're playing against USC in the MPSF finals at BYU. Um, and they're a good team, you know. They got Sujo's dishing the rock, mm-hmm. and they got some good players on that team. And I, was I guess B they, Bills on that team still. Yeah, B Bills was on that team. I remember him putting one up in the balcony during the game. He he, I remember him just yeah. crushing the ball because that guy yeah. he could bring heat too. When it lined up, it lined up for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, so I remember coming to that game, and I I don't know if I've ever felt worse. I just felt so terrible. I was super nauseous. I was like that close to just just everything was about to come up and I'm in the training room before the game and I'm thinking man oh man like I don't think I can go tonight and um the I'm like meeting with the team doctor and he's like yeah you know you're looking pretty bad we got to keep you um hydrated and all this stuff and he's like um take take this this will make you feel a lot better uh there is one side effect though it'll it'll actually amp you up it'll get you really excited and I'm like, well, uh-huh. I mean, that doesn't sound too bad right now. I need a little pick me up. Right. Right. So, so I take these pills and I, I start feeling a little bit better and I'm like, all right, I'll go try this out. And I'm kind of talking to Hector before the game. I'm like, man, dude, like don't come to me unless you absolutely have to. And then of course it's a super tight match and I end up with, you know, 30 kills or whatever. Right. Right. But, right. Right. But I remember there were certain times during the game, like it would be really tight and, Carl would call a timeout or, or McLaughlin would call a timeout and I'd be sitting in the timeout and Carl would be saying something or you'd be saying something or Troy or, and I would just be like, and then you'd see me go like this and I'd like catch myself cause I was falling asleep. And I was like, wow. how is this even possible? And so we finally get through the match and we win in four, but it was really tight. And then, uh, you know, everyone's all super excited. We just won the conference first time we'd ever won the conference and, and, uh, and then finally I go back into the locker room and the, doc- the doctor sees me and he goes, so how do you feel now? And I go, oh, I feel a lot better now. I'll just get the adrenaline pumping all the gunk out of me. And he goes, how'd you feel during the game? And I go, you know, it was so weird. I, I kept falling asleep whenever we we'd go to the bench and he goes, yeah, those pills are pretty, they'll knock you out pretty quick. I, I told you it was going to excite you just so you wouldn't know that they were but like, they're like borderline sleeping pills. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, so he told me that it was going to make me excited when he knew that it was actually their downers just because they were anti-Nazi pills that were supposed to. Right, 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 right. 
And uh, I just Crazy. thought to myself, that's tricky. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit and get into the national team. You know, yeah. obviously, we got to work together for uh, seven years or so. You, uh, you got to go to Sydney, which was a little bit bitter, bittersweet. Go to the show. Pretty good games, but obviously disappointing. We don't need to touch on that unless you got something to say. But, I mean, it kind of speaks for itself there. Yeah, we just okay. have to perform. So, Athens, right? Yeah. And, uh, and some really – I mean, obviously fourth place sucks. We all know that, right? It's the – you don't get to see anything. You don't get to do anything. You just get heartache. Um, right. But, you know, we're over it. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it was tough. But uh, – but a few things about that 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 games in particular, uh, the Greek match, right? I mean, that's one of the that to me that's one of the the, the most uh, underappreciated moments in USA men's volleyball history or something. I mean, that that thing was crazy, crazy. Yeah, it was right. What, yeah. what do you think about that? Oh man, I I remember giving an interview afterwards and just telling the the media people like this won't this won't be a match that I'll forget anytime soon. I mean it was okay. So let's let's replay it because we're down two one against the Greeks. It's in Greece. There's a number of different things I remember about that match. We're down two one in Greece. The place is just going crazy. I mean there's tons of Greek fans. They got all rocking. the flags flying yep. and everything. And yep. uh, and we're down twenty to twelve in the fourth. That's right. Yeah, twenty to twelve. And, uh, and we come back and we, we win that set, which was yeah. amazing hey, into while itself. We're, while we're there, sorry to interrupt, but uh, on the bench, right? Doug, Magoo, myself. Yep. 20 to 12, McGowan shuts down the computer, takes the headphones off. <laughs> and he's like, well, it was a good run. <laughs> And then, I was like, come on, Carl. He's like, no, no, no. And then, and then all of a sudden, it's like 23 all. And he's like furiously trying to get his, like, he's like, Rob, how do I get this thing going again? Put my headphones back on. <laughs> Can't get my head. How do I log into this thing? It's so classic. But anyway, yeah. Oh, we, came, we came back and won. Yeah. Yeah. So then we go to the fifth set, and that's just back and forth until the Greeks yep. pull ahead again. I think we were down 13-11, I think. 12-9. Or 12-9, 13-11, yep. something yep. like that. And then we yep. come back, tied up. We go to deuce points, and, and I think we eventually won 17-15 on a last play that I think Hoff will tell you to this day that he still netted on. <laughs> so <laughs> the Greeks yeah, almost tear down the net. Yeah, he got a fingernail. Or he touched but, it. Yeah, yeah that I mean, might have been it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the Greek yeah, guys Jordan, are like literally Jordan tearing down the net. Yeah. 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 Super uncomfortable. Oh, like. yeah. Huge. For, and then all, I remember, I remember we were in the, um, the media, the press junket afterwards. And the Greek coach, yeah. who I think was really good friends with Doug, is that right? They were like yeah. really close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. goes, he said something to the effect of, it's hard for me to talk right now. The reason why is right. because um, this match will be the end of Greek national volleyball. We, we will never yeah. recover from this loss. And, and they never have because they've never been good since. That's true. That's exactly right. And, and the other thing about that Pierce thing, so the guy that tore down the net or was trying to tear down the net, uh, Sully and I were, were going out to the little stretching area or whatever afterwards. And yeah. uh, through the mix zone, and that guy, the, the press was asking him questions through the mix zone. He was like hysterical, like yelling and screaming in Greek. And then he was like trying to swing at the, like reaching over and like trying to swing at the reporters that were asking him questions. It was crazy. Like a fight was breaking out in the in the mix zone. It was super nuts. And he was like screaming, like completely unhinged. It was nuts. But wow. the thing that the other thing that was kind of cool about that match from our point of view. Yeah, because he's right, right? I mean, Greek volleyball, we just crushed it. That was it done, right? Yeah. Right there. But two years earlier in Argentina, uh, in the world championships, we had to play them for the right to get out into the, into the next phase of the competition. You remember that? And they won 17-15 yeah. in the fifth, and they were yeah. running around and Bob yeah. and the coach was yeah. jumping on top and whatever, all super uncool. Yeah. And so, you know, karma is what it is. But um, – yeah, it was good to get those guys back. Yeah. And then the other thing that was interesting about those games that I don't know if you've 
talked about much or thought about was, um, you know, Brazil stuff, right? I mean, yeah, that, that was kind of a crazy thing to be a part of, right? Oh, but, yeah. I mean, have you ever experienced anything like that? Um, only with Brazil, because they'd done it before, actually. And so, in fact, right. Reed and I talked about this yesterday when we met, because um, I was curious, you know, I don't know if it's just the, the American mentality, because it's like, if Doug goes into the locker room and says, hey, guys, like, we're going to throw this match during the Olympics, I, I think he would have had a mutiny on his hands. Like, we're like, what are you talking about? Like, talk yeah. about karma. All we're yeah. doing is setting ourselves up for some type of karma thing to come back and bite us if we're going to throw matches. Right, right. Yeah. So I, just I don't know if that guys. was uh, – they... No, you go. I was just going to say, I didn't I – didn't, I always thought maybe it was just a Bernardino thing. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. You, you probably know him better than I do, but was it a Bernardino thing or was it? Yeah, I don't know. I've never asked him about it. I, I just thought, I mean, obviously they changed the rules. The FIVD changed the rules about tiebreakers after that. Right. <laughs> so, but I, I just remember that match. They were going back there trying to miss serves so, and just right. railing yeah. on this ball. And yeah. they were like, hitting, <laughs> guys, and then they like turn around and start laughing like, hey, coach, <laughs> I'm trying to hit it out, but these – these guys keep getting in the way, you know, they yeah. it was hilarious. It was just so, um, yeah, you know, was, and the rough. thing that's kind of a bummer is they were the best team in the world. You know what I mean? That year they would, they were the best and, and no. they didn't need to do that. You know, yeah. I told, that's exactly they what I said to Reed. Straight up and being just, that's exactly what I told Reed. I was like, you know what though? Cause you're absolutely right. I, I, I even think the level of volleyball that they were playing at that time against the other teams yeah. was so much higher. You know, with, with what yeah. Ricardo yeah. was doing, setting the ball, and um, the connection that he had with Nascimento, how, the speed to the outside with Giba and Dante, and, and the, the, the big movement yeah. on top of their quicks. I mean, they were so far advanced than anyone else at that time that, yeah, you're absolutely right. They didn't need to throw yeah. matches. They were just going to yeah. beat down everybody. Well, maybe they were a little freaked out because they had that epic, epic match in pool play with Italy. That was really one of the best matches in Olympic history. Probably that match and then our match against Russia in the semifinal is pretty good as well. And then there maybe Russia-Brazil final with, uh, with 20, 2012. But anyway, they, um, maybe they were just a little wigged out. But anyway, it was what it was. Fourth place in Athens. I think it, it helped us be better in 2008, you know, um, having gone the distance. So when it comes to 2008, right, there's a few things, lots going on that, that quad, but uh, yeah. 2007 World Cup versus Russia, winner goes to the show. Tell me about that match. Man, Russia, the, the hard thing about Russia is we just, for some reason, just could never put it all together in the right times against them. Um, they, we, we, whether it was a matchup right? problem we, we or – we were up two one. We were up yeah. twenty sixteen. Yeah. They overpass. Riz yeah. crushes the overpass. Has a little word to, you know, Poltovsky or something. I don't know. It says something. <laughs> and then that guy goes back and serves nine in a row. Nine in a row. I, I played with Poltovsky overseas, and I've never seen him serve nine serves in a row uh, in the court. No, no, so. Volkov served him. Pol Poltovsky. Oh, Volkov. Maybe. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Poltovsky just sided out over over the top of oh, Riley yeah. and hit it on the five foot line or something. Yeah. I have yeah. seen him do that before. <laughs> yeah, geez, that guy was crazy. But yeah, anyway. I don't know. We just there was just something about Russia. We just didn't match up well with them. And and um, yeah. as you know, I mean, yeah. our our record against them during that quad and during many years even before that was just not good. We just yeah. I don't know. We just didn't not match. It, our record against Brazil was always way better. Because yeah. I do feel like yeah, we I'd matched agree. up pretty well against Brazil, but against Russia, for some reason, it just was rough. And then, and then well, we dropped. Brazil was a little bit. You go. I was just going to say the, the the thing that I remember most about 07 World Cup is we were playing at a pretty high level, except that freaking match against Puerto Rico, which drove me insane. That was the one that killed me. <laughs> I mean, I just I couldn't believe that we lost yeah. those guys. Well, they were getting better. I mean, we lost 3-1 at home in, the, in that 2007 Norseka. I mean, sorry, we won 2-1, 3-1. But I, I agree. I mean, it, we beat Brazil 3-0, and then the next day we were out 3-1 to Puerto Rico. Right. And, and it's, 
You know, this first time since like 1978 yeah. that beaten, they'd beaten us. <laughs> but uh, they probably lived to regret, uh, you know, because yeah. uh, you know, things, things didn't work out. But um, yeah, yeah, I think our matchup with Brazil, that, that was a little bit easier lock for us to pick in seven and eight than Russia. Russia was just, you know, can you out physical these right. physical guys? And it was really hard to do that. It's and we, we weren't that yeah. team. The, but we, we, weren't, we weren't the team no. that's going to out-physical those guys. We're going to out-system them. And, and, uh, you that know, was and, it. And, that was our only and, strength was could right. we be a better team. <laughs> right. We weren't going to be better volleyball athletes, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. So, you know, Puerto Rico, we lose to them, and then we have to go to Puerto Rico for the qualifier, right? That, right. Was, uh, that was pretty gnarly. Yeah. What do you remember that, about that? I just, remember, I just remember us being like, there's no – there's no freaking way that we're not going to qualify here. I mean, we're just, we're, we're going to play good volleyball and we're going to qualify. I just, we felt really confident around what we were able to do in that tournament. I mean. No, you were talking about slick. I mean, there were, there were some about Reed, right? There were, there were some yeah. things in that tournament that I thought were really profound for us in terms of our growth. I don't know if you remember just before we were going to meet Clay and uh, Loy there because they were finishing up in Russia, right? They had the Russian yeah. cup or something. And then I don't know if you remember just when we were going to head up, from Anaheim up to LAX and um, Sean Rooney's girlfriend uh, uh, got in a car accident. You remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Right, right before. And so Sean ended up staying and then he yeah. made sure she was okay. And then we got there and, and uh, you know, the, the, the thing that one of the most profound moments I, I've had with the national team and the coach was, you know, we're, we're obviously feeling the heat. We got to qualify at this thing because it doesn't get easier if, if you don't get it down to Puerto Rico. Yeah, but the night before the final, we play we played the cubes in that semi, and it's we win, but it's you know it's pretty close. And and Reed and Lloyd, the, the groove isn't quite there. So yeah. I remember talking to Reed and just saying, Reed, you know, ha, how do you want to deal with this? And um, here's what he says: He goes, Hey, look, you can start me, or, or you can not start me. I trust you guys to do whatever you think's right for the team, but I'll, I'll be good the way, and, and we're going to win. But here's a guy that's been a starter for the last six years or whatever. Basically right. saying, hey, look, I'll do whatever we need to do to win it. And, I mean, that changed the narrative for everybody on that team relative to, you know, what it was to start or not start. It was just, hey, we're all on the team together. It was such a pivotal moment. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I don't think he wanted that to be the way, but he was like, hey, I'll do whatever it takes. And it was super cool. And then Rooney, I think that's the only ma match he started in the quad. We'd never started that lineup, but yeah. Rooney was great. Reed was yeah, going was. through the back row at times, doing an awesome job. I mean, it was – phenomenal yeah, I remember that. yeah Rooney was Rooney was pretty unstoppable um, yeah you know uh, yeah. maybe it caught Puerto Rico off guard a little bit too where they're just like okay we weren't we didn't game plan for this six nine guy that hits at 12 feet every time that's right he was just going over those guys it was awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. right and then obviously good to win it right I mean you go to the show and uh, yeah like I, I don't know they, they just showed it the other night right yeah and yeah. uh which was super surreal to, yeah. to see it again. Cause I, I, I'm honestly, we're just worrying about today. So I haven't seen it right. for a long time. Um, and you know, you I just so much pride about that team and what it was able to accomplish. But I just remember it getting close to match point. We're up 24, 22. And I don't know how you were, but I just remember at that point. I was like, like we could actually win the Olympics. Like <laughs> before that, it was always like something that you dreamt about. You know, it was never something you actually did. You know, but right. it's like, oh my gosh, we can side out and win the Olympic Games. And, and my heart rate just, just blah, 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 started kicking <laughs> off. And I, was just, I had to turn away, just like take a breath. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to show the guys that I'm, you know, having a little moment here. I got it under control. But the way that team played, you know, uh, so much control, so much voice, even, even in the 20s of that set to win it. Phenomenal, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally, because you, I, you know, I you're absolutely right, and it was interesting because it was you'd think Brazil they got their whole team back from '04 pretty much, except right. for Ricardo, yeah. which is obviously a big piece because who knows yeah. if he's there, what happens? But um, yeah. you know, and you no, got Giba and you got Dante, there. you got all the guys, Gustavo, they're yeah. all back. Sergio's doing his thing, and then so we're up two one twenty twenty in that fourth set, and they're the ones that are are pushing. You know, they're the ones that are making the errors and we're the ones that are keeping the pressure on them. And, and it was at, at that yeah. point where I'm like, man, like we're pretty, we're pretty steady right now. I remember it was, um, uh, let's see, it would have been 23, 22. 
and we side out, and yeah. there's a play where um, – so we pass. Lloyd sends it out to Riley. He hits it off the block, and I cover him. And the cover goes yep. kind of all the way to the other side of the court, and I run the ball off my cover. I run the ball down, and Loy sets me a quick from, like, right there, and I put it in the middle of the court, and that's how we side out to go to match point. And I'm that's just right. thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. like, what a, what a ballsy play to just throw that in there at that moment, you know, knowing that, you know, the times that we've had together that he knew I was going to be up, he knew I was going right. to be available, right. and just to throw it in there, and then we get that side out. And I'm just thinking, man, this is – it was awesome. You got it. And, and also with that play, you know, Riles is up there. And, and, you know, for a while, like maybe for the first few years of that quad, Riley was just, I'm going to hit it as hard as I can. You right. know, and, and then, I mean, he just developed so much range. And he took so many big swings. But that particular swing, he's like, you know what? I don't like what I got here. He just right. chips it into the block. Right into the block. the cover is going to be. He just chips it in. Yep get it back and then you run to space and and yeah. Loy sees it and away we go but it was just to me that was exactly our team right there we yeah. make a good choice make the right choice at the right time and if i got it then i'm going to go for it if i don't like it then i'm going to give ourselves another chance we're not going to try to make something out of nothing i mean it was just beautiful yeah. stuff really yeah. really satisfying to see us be able to play like that yeah it was a it was a it was a great time, even even going back into World League, which, you, you, when you, you know, when you talk to the guys, they'll talk a lot about how World League kind of set us up. But, I mean, I talked to Rich, too, and yeah. he, he's like, you got to remember what happened in World League. I mean, we were like one swing away from immediately getting eliminated because if you remember the World League finals, we come in, we play Serbia right off yeah. the bat, and they crush us down. It, it like really yeah, just well, really got beat bad. Right. And we're like, but even one step before that, even one step before that, I don't know if you remember, but uh, the last weekend, we've already qualified for the finals. So we go to Bulgaria with all the young guys and we oh, leave yeah. a bunch of old guys and the, the plane breaks or something in Miami. <laughs> so they're trying to get down to Brazil and they can't even get there. We don't even know if they're going to arrive in time for the, um, for the technical meeting because we can't submit a roster if they're not actually here. And so Cristobal oh. ends up getting involved so that we're like, hey, they're on the plane. They're going to be here like so that we can actually get approved to have the guys on our roster so that we can actually play with them. So no everyone's free now. So we didn't even get to practice before we played Serbia, <laughs> except Serb and pass that morning, right? And then right. we play the Serbs and we get beat down. We play Poland. And yeah, who, what was the name of that high-flying opposite for the Poles? Uh, it was uh, Valzi. Valzi, yeah, 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 yeah. So he has a swing for the match. Right. And thank goodness he misses. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was, we were done. If that guy kills the ball, we're done. It's over. That's right. And then we come back and beat those guys. And then all of a sudden, you know, our, our stars are different. We end up winning. But that, yeah. that match against Serbia, to me, the um, – I mean, well, first of all, again, Brazil and the Sammy in Brazil. Right. And you beat them down 3-0. That's huge, yep. huge uh, confidence build there for against those guys. Totally. And, and then to beat Serbia because that yeah. match was gnarly. I mean, yeah, it wasn't good match. Yeah, super gnarly. It wasn't like Russia in the semifinal was great volleyball and people are flying around and doing stuff. Right. Serbia was super gritty, like blue collar. I called it the blue oh collar million gosh. dollars. You know, I mean, it was such a grind. Such a I grind. hated I hated playing against those guys because they're so technically sound. They pass really well. They block really disciplined. They play great defense. You know, Gerbich is flowing it around. Milkovic yeah. is doing what he does. And they, it's yeah. just it, – it's like it, – I was talking to Reed about this yesterday. I'm like, you know, Beijing was no cakewalk. It's like we, we play really well in the pool. We beat down everyone. And then for that, we get to cross over against Serbia. Who, <laughs> yeah. Like, we just yeah. barely beat in the World League Finals, who has, like, yeah. one of the best players in the world and all these guys yeah. that are already gold medalists. And it's like, geez, well, this isn't going to be a cakewalk. And then we go down to one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And so, yeah. but yeah, the, the Russia match though, hard, the Russia match was, was one that I won't soon forget for a couple of reasons. One, the first two sets, I don't think I've ever seen someone dominate multiple sets from a service line like Clay did in those first two sets. Cause I remember, I remember the Russian oh, guys, really? Clay was just ace, ace, ace. He, I don't even know, he had like eight or nine aces in the first two sets. And, and, like, the Russian guys, yeah. I remember Verbov, after he got another one, like, three in a row, he looks over to Lenko, Lenko and he goes, 
Like, I don't, like, there's nothing we can do. He's hitting it too hard and he's hitting it all over the court. And, and yeah. it's like, what do we do? What, we're going to pull f- like five people back to pass to fill the seams or like, it was just, yeah. it was nuts. It was, man. And, and then, yeah, obviously the, um, so the yeah, World League final, you win it. And that's a big deal. I tell people all the time before you can win something big, you've got to won something big. And, and I think being able to win World League made us believe like, hey, maybe we could do something yeah. special at the Olympics. And, and uh, yeah, crossing over into those guys was no easy feat. Head hole and, uh, and then rush. I think they hit, he hit 42% efficiency for that match. They hit 41% efficiency. Wow. Uh, I mean, that's how oh good it was. Gosh. I mean, it was gnarly. Yeah. And so it was just, um, it was crazy. But I remember, again, you know, we're talking about moments with that team. But in the fifth set, and we're fighting for our lives, and it's yeah. gnarly, and, you know, whatever. That timeouts, everyone's cool. We're just, hey, you know, we're going to do this. We'll be here. Let's make sure we're strong on this thing. You know, I mean, it wasn't. I know in years pr- prior to that, you know, we'd have people running around screaming, don't panic to each other, you know, but, don't panic. but uh, <laughs> top of their lungs, but this way, everyone's just like, Hey, okay, here we go. We're going to do this, this, and this, and make sure we're in this guy, you know, and obviously so much about um, the opposite for them. Uh, Mikhailov, who was, oh my gosh. you know, a young guy at that time, but man, that guy's unstoppable. And, Ugh. you know, just a great run by D Lee at the end of that sit to close yeah. it out. A couple of big beautiful. side outs and then the big stuff. But, yeah. Yeah. The tough thing for them, you know, he, that guy killed so many balls. Like he was automatic, right? I mean, we could hardly contain him. Right. But I just remember at, 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 for the match, Koser, was it Koserev? Is that the other guy? With Tukes, the other out, the other outside. Yeah, yeah, Kosarev. Right. Yeah. So he's he's left front. They dish it back. D Lee stuffs it, but it's down on like eleven feet. You know right. what I mean? It's like on the ten by ten square. Where yep. if you're running the the go and then you run into cover, it's pretty they easy cover. Off. But yep. he just kind of runs the go and he just stops. And then yep. he kind of like watches. It. You're like, dude, that's your you. How, how, how do you just let that go? But well, luckily that's, he did. <laughs> that's the difference. That's, that's the system execution, right? I mean, that's when, that's when yeah. the structure comes into play, when you don't have to worry about the, your, your left side peeling off after they, they don't get set to cover because right. that's just the way you do things. And, you know, and in those moments is when it really counts. Right. Yeah. Cause nobody would even care if that happened when it was, you know, 12 all in the second set. But, but it's 1614 <laughs> right. in the fifth, and th- that's when the system's got to break in the most. You know, I asked, I asked Reed while we're talking about this, Hugh, I said, I'm going to talk to Hugh tomorrow. What would be a question you would want to ask him? And uh, he said, ask him this, during, during that quad from 04 to 08, how, how are you able to stay the course um, with your vision of that team during all the ups and downs? Because we just, you know, we kind of just went through it. That quad was world champs was not easy. We, 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 we kind of pooped the bed in World Cup, and now we got to go qualify. Yeah. Um, yeah. How was it that you were able to stay the course throughout that quad? Did, did you, to us, it seemed like the vision of what you wanted that team to be never really wavered. But, but I'm, I'm assuming mm-hmm. there, you know, did you doubt? that vision that you had or was it just kind of like hey i know what this team's capable of it's all going to work itself out at the right times or or go tell us what's going through your mind as you're kind of going through the roller coaster of that quad well and roller coaster is right um you know i guess the short answer ryan is that uh you know before taking the job i knew obviously being with the guys for three years before that and i knew you know, what we had and, and I knew the landscape of what everyone else had. And, you know, the, we, you know, to your, to our earlier conversation, we weren't going to be more physical than Russia right. and we weren't going to play faster than Brazil. Right. And we weren't on the same vitamin regimen that the Bulgies were on, you know, right. so we just, we, we didn't have that. So, so the only thing I thought was we had to be the best team in the world. And, and that was the strength that we had to play to. And, uh, and to me, the best team was going to be how we, how we went about working together and how we ended up playing together, you know? So it was not just, 
uh, camaraderie because that, that team really different personalities, really different oh, yeah. group of guys, yeah. but a great team, the way we yeah. played together and the way we worked together. Phenomenal. Right. I mean, what a privilege to be a part of it. And so to me, it was always about working to get to that point. And, and I guess when you coach, you know, you've got to, if you can't believe in it, then it's really hard to get anyone else to believe in it. <laughs> it's a good so, point. <laughs> uh, I, I talk a little bit about belligerent optimism. You know, I think it was more like, Hey, this, this is not what we needed to be right now. I mean, you talk about that world championships, like we were this close to not even getting out of the pool. Like, yeah. and I remember talking to the Italians after they beat Venezuela because, you know, Venezuela beat us and then we lost to, did we lose to Bulgi? I can't remember. I, I don't know. But anyway, Italy had to beat Venezuela for us to get out of the pool. But I remember afterwards, the coach of Italy coming over to me goes, hey, we fought for you guys today because we think you've got a better chance of beating Brazil. And, mm. um, but they could have, they could have farmed it and we could have been done. They could have bounced us right there. And right. during that match, I could, you guys, maybe people were watching. I couldn't watch. I was in the locker room lying on the floor just thinking, God, I can't believe it. We're going to, like, we're pretty good in 2005. <laughs> we're just going to farm it here in 2006. But uh, we didn't. We ended up, well, we kind of did 10th. It wasn't anything. But uh, it was, no. we learned a lot from that, from that loss. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, none of this is algorithmic and none of it was linear. You know, it's not like we thought it was input out but i just always believed that if we could become the best team that we, we had the talent to make up for whatever we, we we couldn't do physically or whatever you know because that 2006 brazilian team I, I don't know if you remember but they were running so fast like they had a third step going trains like right. a third step go so what so you'd be like it was like top gun you know like where'd who go you know and you're just <laughs> in there and and then all of a sudden they get you know They'd set the go and trans, and we'd be just getting back to our bunch read, like, here we are, you know, and then all of a sudden, Dante's just bouncing it on the left pin. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So it was just craziness. But yeah. as the team got better and better, and as we, as we added more layers, and, yeah. and as we continued to get the right people in the right spots, and, and really, I don't think that team became high functioning until 2008 in Puerto Rico. Uh, I thought Scotty T was such a huge addition to that group. Um, because he was just stoked to be there and he made it cool for everyone just to be on the team because he was, he was so into just being on the team. You know, he didn't care about play or not play. He was just like, man, this is awesome. And that was kind of infectious, I thought. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just always thought I – always, I, I always just thought we could figure it out. I didn't know that that would translate to the outcomes, but it was always about, hey, we got to just do the best that we can. And, and that was the only way we could compete was to be the best team. So let me, let me ask you this, just, I don't know, not too much time because I don't want to take up too much of your time, but how, how hard is it, was it for you to make the decision after 08 to switch over to the women's team, um, knowing a couple things, and I just want to get your thoughts on this. Did you, did you always kind of have a master plan that that was obviously kind of the logical way to go? And was it difficult knowing that in 12, so we got another quad, where we're going to have a really good team. I mean, yeah. we're going to have a, a, most of the team from 08 back. I mean, realistically, if everyone stays healthy, it's so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're thinking to yourself, like, you know, we could do another run at this uh, in another four years. And was that something that was, that was hard for you to, to, to give up as well? Yeah, really difficult, obviously, because, uh, you know, as you know, that, that 08 group was at least, in my heart has such a special place. And, and uh, you know, that's part of the reason why I, I, I thought about maybe the change was good because I, I was so connected to, to those 12 guys that I knew that I'd have to make some tough decisions and I didn't know if I could be objective. And then, you know, the other part to that decision was just, you know, the, the four year thing is at least back, back then, which makes me seem super old because I'm talking about back in the day, but uh, you know, the, the seasons would go from April through, you know, into November. I, you right. remember all those Thanksgivings we had in Japan. I mean, Oh yeah. Uh, those were always corn fun. Bread, the, the cornbread, the wonder bread with bits of corn stuck in it. Right. You know, all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but anyway, it, it was like this, this thing's such a meat grinder. If I'm going to stick in it, I, it would be, it just seemed like it would be, 
interesting to have a different experience, you know, because I was still young, you know, I mean, uh, 38 and, yeah. and, you know, you've been to the mountaintop. So it's like, well, we're going and reinventing that same wheel again. Didn't, didn't hold the same appeal. And, and I did think that, you know, the, uh, there was an opportunity to kind of get off of men's volleyball and women's volleyball and take, you know, this body of work or, or this, this method or culture or whatever that, that had been created over all of these years through the work of, you know, uh, Coleman and Neville and obviously Doug Beal and McGowan and Marv and all of these people that had contributed to this body of work that was so successful on the men. That's it. That was weird. Okay, yeah. body of work. Keep going. Oh, uh, I can't remember. Body of work. <laughs> you know, you just, you were talking about kind of the, the, the foundation that was laid and you, you're now taking this body of work to yes, something yes, yes. different. So all, saying, you know, all these people on the men's side have contributed to a really successful paradigm. You know, I mean, Coleman and Neville and Beal and McGowan and Dunphy and, uh, you know, uh, all of these people that contributed up until that point on, 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 you know, how we were training our guys and we were having this really good success with a really small population. So the idea of taking that, and applying it to a, a bigger population on the women's side, a more sustainable population was really intriguing. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was a little bit of a mad scientist experiment, but the, the fact now that we're, we don't really talk so much about the, the women's style of volleyball and the men's style of volleyball, the role right. just playing volleyball. I think it's really. Uh... <laughs> Zoom, Zoom is telling us that we're going to, we're going over time too much. <laughs> okay. Do we need to shut it down? No, I just, it's just for some reason, the connection is bad for some reason. So it keeps kicking me out. But uh, yeah, I think, I think we got, I mean, I think I got your point. And, uh, and so I think, I don't know, it's, it's probably a question that a lot of guys at that time probably wanted to ask you or pick your brain around. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, it makes, it, it makes sense. Um, and so I appreciate your perspective on that. Um, and of course it, it sets you up for, for things that you're doing today as well. I mean, um, which yeah, is transforming was, the program at Minnesota. I mean, look, I know that you weren't thinking that at that time, but you know, it, it has set you up nice to do what you're doing at Minnesota, which is, I mean, Minnesota was kind of a, they were a decent program, but they weren't a powerhouse when, before you got there. Is that right? Or am I mistaken? No, I, they, they'd had uh, a good level of success. I mean, they'd been to, to some final fours, but um, oh, okay. you know, I, I think it, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's just a privilege to be at a place where it matters, you know, where the community cares, the school cares, Yeah. you know, kind of like, you know, back in the day at BYU, but we're BYU, selling out our, yeah our arena every night they're scalping tickets for 150 bucks a pop out on the street. Yeah. You know I mean? It's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But the, you know, I, I, as you know, right from time to time, I write our group of guys, the 2012 crew and um, you know, so much, so much good stuff for me for that group. And it's hard because you know, you win and you guys got taken off to the locker room and they were like, Hey, they're coming out, they're coming out. We never really got a chance to, to celebrate too much because you know I had to take off right away after the after the match. But um, you know, I hope you understand. You know that that decision was not easy right. because of how much I cared about that group. But I also cared about them enough to try to do the right thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. You never. That was nothing that needed to be discussed by any of us. So one thing that does need to be discussed and maybe we can end with this is um, identifying when the reunion is going to happen. I know we've tried a few times, oh, but man. I mean, at some point we got to get that crew back together and do something. Um, I love it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We got to pull the trigger somehow. I mean, I know we were trying to put something together for the 10 year, but yeah. um, who knows? Maybe it's the 15 year. I think uh, there's enough interest from enough parties that we'll get it going. But uh, yeah, you, you, we'll uh, we'll get the committee and uh, and go from there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Listen, we've chatted a lot, and hopefully you can slice and dice this into something that works for you. But uh, no, this really, is awesome a pleasure, man. It's so great just to chat. And yeah. uh, I think the coolest thing is we probably could have had this chat 
regardless of whether people were listening or not. Oh, well, totally. <laughs> absolutely. <to> <laughs> so true. <laughs> really good stuff. So thanks for All having right, me. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. great connecting with you. Say hi to Wiz yeah. for me and uh, take do. care of yourself. We'll talk Cheers soon. To you. Cheers, Ryan. All See right, you, bye.